Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we will learn about Kafka partitioning. Now, we touched upon this concept in the last video when we were covering consumer groups. And in this video, we will spend some more time on the Kafka partitioners. So, let's get started. So, suppose in this scenario, we have the Kafka running. So, this box represents the up and running Kafka. And we have a topic T with multiple partitions. So, in this case, the topic T has three partitions P0, P1, and P2. Now, when we have a topic with multiple partitions and when we have the producer who is producing the events or generating the events and sending it to topic T, how do we decide or how do we know which event will go to which partition? So, for example, this producer generated an event E1, then how do we decide that this E1 should go to P0 or P1 or P2? Okay, and then when the producer generates more events like E2 and E3, how this mechanism works? how these events will be distributed across these partitions which is p0 p1 and p2 so that is the role of a partitioner in kafka kafka provides a couple of default partitioners which according to their algorithm distribute the events to different partitions of a topic so this same situation would look something like this suppose we have the same producer okay now there will be another component kafka partitioner so when the producer is sending the events to kafka this partitioner will decide depending on the algorithm or partitioner selected this partitioner will decide whether an event should go to p0 to p1 or to p2 so we know when a producer sends a particular event to kafka it has a couple of options what that means is the producer can send the actual payload which is the value alone it can also send the key along with the value which is the event itself so when we send the event with a key kafka can use this key to decide which partition to use and this algorithm is known as the hashing algorithm what that means is when you send the event with a particular key kafka will hash the key and depending on the hash of the key it will send that event to a particular partition so for example it could be p0 p1 or whatever it is en the important thing is in this case kafka will calculate the hash based on the key which you have sent okay and depending on that hash the particular partition will be selected then we also have the flexibility to write a custom partitioner and use that custom partitioner to distribute the events to different partitions now when we use the custom partitioner we write the implementation itself depending on the routing that we need okay and then there is the configurations defined in kafka library that we will use to provide this custom partitioner to kafka so that kafka knows how to distribute the events to different partitions depending on the custom partitioner then comes the last scenario where we only send the value or the payload or the event without any key or without any custom partitioner so what happens when we send the event without any key now in this case the earlier versions of kafka used to use round robin in round robin what kafka would do so suppose you are not sending a key you are just sending the event and you have three partitions in that topic so according to the round robin algorithm kafka will distribute the events to each partition in round robin fashion so for example the first event will go to this partition then the second event will go to this partition and the third event will go to this partition and if you are generating more events then this cycle would repeat and it will start from here then here then here basically the round robin algorithm but in the newer versions this round robin algorithm has been changed with sticky partitioning so let's understand this sticky partitioning so suppose we have the same producer and same topic with three partitions in the newer versions of kafka kafka uses a sticky partitioner okay so instead of sending the messages to all the available partitions one by one in the round robin fashion kafka will try to stick with a single partition as long as it is possible to do so so what that means is instead of sending messages to each partition one by one depending on the configuration what kafka will do kafka will batch all the events into a single batch okay and then it will send this batch to a single partition so it will try to stick to that particular partition now when this batch is full or a certain timeout occurs which depends on the kafka producer configuration maybe for the second batch it might stick to this partition so this particular batch would have maybe m1 m2 and n number of messages or events okay now the benefit of sticky partitioner is that it improves the throughput of kafka because once it sticks to a particular partition depending on the configuration of the batch or the timeout 
it will keep sending the batches to this partition although we should be aware of one condition that even though this sticky partitioner could improve the throughput of the kafka but it might result into uneven distribution of messages or events under certain conditions now that we understand the kafka partitioners let's try to do a quick exercise on different partitioning algorithms so we are going to continue with the same setup that we had in the last video and we have the same topic transactions and this transactions topic has three partitions you can see partition 0 1 and 2 so that means we can run three consumers in this consumer group okay and the kafka is up and running let's check out the code now so we have the same code from the last video this is a very simple producer which is continuously producing transaction events to the transaction topic and because this is a custom event you can see here transaction event we have the transaction serializer and deserializer because we need to pass the custom serializers and deserializers to the producer config which we are doing here you can refer the last video and we also have the simple consumer from the last video subscribing to the transactions topic and polling this topic every 500 millisecond and whenever there is an event on this topic it will consume that event and it will print the partition the key and the value so as we know we are going to run a consumer group with three consumers because the partition or the topic has three partitions so let's first run the consumers so i am going to run the first consumer the first consumer is up so i will run remaining two consumers basically i am running the same class multiple times and one more time to run the third consumer and we can see we have the consumer group with three consumers up and running now let's run the producer as well and if you notice when the producer is generating events to this topic it is also passing a key and this key is the transaction id of that transaction event which is this one this particular string which will be id colon 1 id colon 2 id colon 3 so that means we are passing a valid key to kafka what that means is because we are passing a valid key kafka will use the hash of this key to distribute the event to one of the partitions and that also means if we run all the consumers in the consumer group and the producer then we should see different values or different events in each consumer okay so let's now run the producer which will start generating the events and because this is an infinite loop so it will start generating those events every 500 milliseconds so let me run the producer now and because we have run the producer so if we check the consumers now we can see the consumers are now consuming events from different partitions so you can see uh, this particular consumer which is the instance one is basically reading from partition one you can see i uh, received a new event one and if we go to the consumer this is where we are printing the partition so we can see the first consumer is reading from the first partition basically all these events if we go to the second consumer we can see this consumer is reading from partition 0 and this consumer is reading from partition 2 and we can see all those events are being distributed to all the partitions depending on the key of that particular event which key basically this key id colon and the number that we are incrementing so this is hashing partitioning in action now let me kill all the instances and change the producer a little bit so what i will do i will kill all the instances and i will go to the producer now instead of passing the key i will comment this code and what i will do i will still send the messages to the transactions topic but this time we will not pass the key we will only pass the event or the value so now we are not passing any key what that means is in this case kafka should use the sticky partitioner let's see it in action so we will again first run all the consumers in the consumer group so i can start the consumer from here this is the first consumer this is the second consumer so let me start the second consumer and the third one so we have all the consumers up and running and you can see two events in this consumer because we probably terminated the consumer and there were residue messages on that particular topic or on that particular partition that's why it picked uh, those particular events now if we ignore this one let's clear the console let's now run the producer so this time if we check the consumers because we have started the producer and this time producer is not passing any key so kafka should use the sticky partitioner so let's check the first consumer and we can see there is nothing in the first consumer 
if we check the second consumer second consumer is consuming messages all these messages and if we go to the last consumer we see this consumer is also empty what that means is because we have not passed the key so this particular consumer is consuming all those messages and if you notice further you can see that the partition is one for all these messages which means Kafka's sticky partitioning is acting that also means it is sending all the messages to a single partition which is the partition 1 it picked the partition 1 and it is now sending all those events to the same partition and so this particular consumer who got assigned to this particular partition because we know in consumer group each consumer will be allocated a particular partition so maybe in this case this particular consumer is assigned or allocated this partition so all the events are being consumed by this consumer and these two consumer are doing nothing and as we said uh, this happens because kafka is now batching all those messages and sending those messages to the same partition so can we do something about it can we break this sticky partitioner because as we said it might result into uneven distribution and that is what we can see here that all the messages are being sent to the partition one and so one consumer is overloaded so can we disable somehow this sticky partition so if you remember we said depending on the configuration let's say if the batch is full or if the timeout occurs kafka will split those batches and when there are multiple batches kafka will send all those batches to different partitions so let's try to do that thing so that we can see or we can break this sticky partitioning so let me stop all the instances again now there are a couple of configurations that we can use or experiment with to override the sticky partitioning and one of them is the size of the batch now in this partitioning method when kafka sticks with a particular partition it keeps sending the messages to that partition until the batch is full now what if that batch is full quickly then that means uh, it will generate another batch for the remaining events and maybe that batch will be sent to different partition so we will try to override the batch size and then we will see the behavior of that one so for that we will set a new property the producer property and that is producer config dot batch size and we will set it to one that means we are going to create one batch per message and that means as soon as we generate another message that this will be treated as another batch and then there will be a possibility of sending that batch to different partition so with this change let's restart all those consumers and producers and see it in action so i'm going to start the first consumer then we will start second consumer and the third consumer as well and once we have all the consumers up and running i am going to start the producer now we are still sending uh, only the value and not key so let's verify the behavior so now we can see the messages are being sent to different partitions and we can verify so this is the first consumer which is allocated partition 0 and this is also a reading messages and if we go to the second consumer which is reading from the partition 1 we can see messages being consumed here as well and same with the third consumer so what we did we basically changed the size of the batch to 1 that means uh, we are now reducing the batch size so basically one message represents a single batch and that is why all those batches are being distributed uh, across different partitions so we have successfully overridden this sticky partitioner in this case so we learned how the events are distributed across partitions when we pass the key using hashing partitioner and we saw when we don't pass the key in the newer versions of kafka it uses sticky partitioning and how all the messages are sent to a particular topic or to a particular partition and we also saw how can we uh, modify this sticky partitioning behavior depending on the batch size configuration so that's it for now that's all for this video and i will see you in the next one thanks for watching